when this live album was requested i just thought to myself that i was gonna enjoy it but of, of course it is iron maiden but i didn't know that it would blow me away uh this is the i believe uh one of the first iron maiden shows ever um it, it's not saying when but it was released in 2002 uh yeah it is a live album by the way and uh, we have 18 tracks on there i believe yeah we do For first uh first guess 18 tracks separated from uh two discs and this was in 1982 uh beast beast over hammersmith 1982 95 minutes and 31 seconds so we have a lot uh, a lot of uh, songs just uh, a great length uh, it, it feels a bit like a uh, full picture movie because because of the length and because of how epic everything is um, yeah I'm still gonna say that this is one of the first Iron Man shows yeah of course with Bruce Dickinson and then uh, well previously we had Paul Diano um, so yeah, this was in 1982, like I said, and um, um, that is a really important thing to know, so you know from which albums they are going to play. Uh, they were playing from the first three albums, so we have Iron Maiden, Killers, and uh, The Number of the Beast, that was released in that year. Um, yeah, and those are three uh, of some of the best Iron Maiden wrecks out there uh, ever, so... Uh, really glad that they played them all. Yeah, of course you you're covering 18 songs, so you have to play all of your records th uh, that they had at the time. Because I believe when you count all the songs together, you have 28. So there are only 10 tracks. There there are only 10 tracks not on this. Um, or actually, no, no, there there um, um, there there are 10 tracks not on there. So. Uh, some of the number of the beast, some of Iron Maiden, a lot of for, from Killer though. Um, but yeah, the production, well, production, yeah, Doc Hill and uh, Doc Hall and Steve Harris. But you know, it, it is a live performance. But I didn't know that. Uh, you know, um, I have a list. I have a list of the greatest metal songs of all time. And, I, and this is, by the way, a request for Rock Do If I didn't say this already. Um, and I had a clip on there, or still have, check it out. Uh, top, 10, top 100 metal songs of all time, uh, I think at least. Um, and really high I have on that list is um, Hollered Be Her Name from Iron Maiden. My favorite Iron Maiden track by the way. Um, and I didn't know that, um, that it was performed at Hammersmith. I always thought it was Life After Death. But I listened to that record the other day and... You know, it didn't nearly sound uh, sounded like that. Um, but now I know it is from Beast Over Hammersmith, and I really, really loved the live performance. Uh, so yeah, this is um, yeah actually my favorite live album from Iron Maiden at the moment. Um, I would put it as my second favorite live album of all time. Of course, there's one that um, I have reviewed already, so you probably know it already. But I think that one. Can be beat, can be beaten, but uh, but Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden uh, came really close. So there we are. Uh, yeah, the tracks on there, they are phenomenal. We have, uh, yeah, like I said, we have from the self-titled Killers and um, the Number of the Beast. Uh, we start off with Murders in the Romer, which is a great track from Killers. Uh, really gets the you know the the crowd started the crowd hyped for what is going to come. I really love the just the bass that is just as thick uh, on here as on uh, Killers. I have reviewed the records, so check it out if you haven't already. Uh, then we got of course the classic Red Child, the second song, which is a just another classic man. Uh, this is the only uh, track that really um, Iron Maiden plays to this day because. They aren't the biggest fan of Killers, I believe. I think it is a great record, but still, it is one of the weaker albums in their seven, uh, yeah, well, seven, uh, yeah, in their seven classic albums, but I would say in their 80s output, that is a bit more easy to say. Uh, so yeah, Killers is definitely the 
one of the weaker albums of the 80s era, Iron Maiden, but still, it's still a great record. Uh, because all of those albums are great in the 80s. Um, yeah, Red Child. Red Child is definitely a classic three and a half minutes long. Uh, I just love the bass opening and it is just as amazing as on um, as on the album. I, I think it is great. I think it is a bit more uh, nasally, I would say. Well, nasally, a bit more messy light, but that is of course uh, maybe some beers in your system, maybe some alcohol in general. Um, maybe some drugs as well, I don't know. So your, your playing gets a bit sloppy. Um, I'm not saying that Iron Maiden does all those things, but they probably do. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, then we got Run to the Hills. This was a new song at the time, and um, yeah, people really, really uh, didn't know what to expect because this was one of the first uh, performances that they did it. Um, this is actually recorded in uh, March, so I'm actually gonna look up if if they didn't. Um, if, if they didn't put out the record yet, the number of the beast. Um, well, uh, it was actually re released in March as well, at uh, March tw uh, 22nd. And the number of the beast was um, was released and on March 20th um, we have the live album, or it was recorded at least. So this is really interesting, so people uh, didn't they literally didn't know what to expect because the number of the beast uh, songs weren't released yet two, yet, two days. Uh, so yeah, people just love the the bass grooves on there. Uh, it really got the uh, the crowd started. It really got them high because they didn't know the number of the beast yet because it was entirely new for them. Of course, we all know it now as one of their best albums. Uh, yeah, I just really love uh, Bruce's energy on this track. I really love it and just live man. He destroys it. It, it is great uh, Children of the Damned is one of the best songs uh, on air uh, at least um, Live wise so the word I, I'm, I'm not sure but uh, what I really love about this song is that the vocals are exactly um, if, if not even uh, more crisp even better than on uh, Beast Over Hammersmith. I really love that when bands um, uh, have a better sounding quality than on the album. I really love that. Uh, I, I think if you can do that, you are a great band. Uh, there's no denying that. But Ch Children of the Damned is uh, a classic track. I really love Bruce's energy, like I said, on this, uh, on this track and how similar he sounds, how great on point he is with his vocals i think that is great and yeah just the solo in the middle by adrian smith is it, it is godly I'll, i really love the solo in the middle i think it is great and then when that ends you know it doesn't stop with the orgasms it, it doesn't stop with the climax you get the number of the beast and this is just a perfect uh, track listing because every track is just um, just hit, just a slam dunk, just, um, yeah, you know, it is amazing after amazing after amazing. It, it just kills. You, you, you have just kill after kill after kill. And the number of the beast is just a classic song. I really love the, the riffs on there. I really love that. Um, the Bruce is trying the epic scream at the beginning, but he, he miserably fails. I mean, let's be really honest. Well, he doesn't miserably fail. Uh, fail. He at least tries. He gets better, um, you know, later when he uh, is a bit more clear in his voice. But just the high vocal range that you have to do with the number of the beasts. It is so impossible to imitate that even uh, Bruce Dickinson cannot do it. Uh, well, at, uh, especially nowadays he can, but back then just back in 82 when the album wasn't even released he couldn't do it anymore it is so rare to do that if, if you can do that then set, send me a copy send, send a direct link to me i will watch the shit out of that uh, then we get uh, then we get another song like killers um, you know from killers i really love the energy on here the yeah, I think Killers is just a great record. I really love it. And just those riffs sound, um, they sound like, 
What is the word I'm looking at here? They sound like you're drilling to, through metal or something with killers. It really sounds like that. I really love that metaphor, that um, that description. How, how, it, how I would describe that, I think that was great. Just drilling through metal. It really, it really sounds like that. That is actually a really original comment for me. I'm pretty sure never has ever, uh, no one has ever said that. So, wow, the almost knows originality. Where do you get it from? I don't know. Um, I just love this track, man. I think it's great. The riffs are amazing. Uh, it is almost six minutes on this uh, version, so I really love that it is a bit of a extended play. I, I think that is great because it is a great song. Uh, and then to close with this one, we get uh, 22 Acacia Avenue. Which is just a classic of the of the number of the beast record. I really love the the bass tones on 22. I, I I think it is overall just a great record, man. The number of the beast. I haven't reviewed it yet, but you probably already know the rating, man. Um, yeah, just this this song is just epic. It is really uh, heavily towards uh, Steve Harris. He really is crisp on this. I think that is great. Uh, and then we get Total Eclipse, which is a B-side from Run to the Hills, and it was later released um, on the 1998 version of um, of the Number of the Beast because it wasn't originally on the album, but it now is. So enjoy that. Uh, this is a bit of a newer song for me because I haven't listened to this song as much as the others, but I still think that this that it is a epic uh, song. Uh, one of the closing songs, I believe, from uh, the Number of the Beast. Uh, we will get to the closing song. Uh, <laughs> believe me, believe me on that. Uh, yeah, I just think that Total Eclipse is a great track, man. I really love it. I really love the, the title alone, the Total Eclipse. That is a really cool title. Uh, yeah, I just like the, <laughs> the, the 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 title Eclipse. I just think that is a great word in general. Um, yeah, then we get more great songs from, uh, from the, this too. We get um, more from the number of the bees. We uh, have the prisoner, and I think what really makes this track is uh, the the beginning uh, sequence that you hear. The uh, who are you? Um, I'm number two. Who am I? I uh, you're number six. And who's number one? Uh, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. I really love that sequence. Um, and just when the guy uh, screams. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a number. I'm a human human being. And then uh, number two is just laughing like, ha ha, you're not, you're you're my prisoner. And then just Bruce kicks it off with um, just I'm the prisoner and just saying that he is number six. That is so clever. I really love that. Uh, yeah, I'm just basically reviewing the number of the beast record there, but it is just so amazing, man. Tears in my eye. Speaking of Tears of Mine, we have Hollard Be Their Name, which is still to this day my favorite Iron Maiden track of all time. And I didn't know, I, I think for a year or something like that, how the live version was called. I'm, I'm a stupid motherfucker, I know. But yeah, um, Beast Over Hammerschmidt is um, yeah, just a great live record. And uh, the live version of Hollard Be Their Name, it is... It almost beats my number one favorite uh, live live show of all time, but not quite yet. Uh, but still, Hollard being the name is oh man, I, I literally get tears in my uh, in my eye because it is so amazing. Just the solo by Adrian Smith is great. The backing instruments from Dave Murray, of course, his guitar. Oh, just uh, just the bass throughout by Steve Harris is just so jaw dropping. It is just so tight um, in Iron Maiden in general. They always stay tight. Steve Harris is always really thick uh, in the production. I really love that about Iron Maiden. I think I think it is great. Yeah, and just a solo towards the end. It is great and just Bruce saying yeah yeah yeah. Just hallowed be thy name. Yeah, yeah, and just that final delivery when he when he is just saying nay. And it is actually still great. It is on point with the number of the beast. But you know, it is reachable. You can uh, he can still do that. That that final scream on hallowed be thy name. And I think that is great. I think they set the bar a bit too high at the number of the beast. I think that is the problem. But still, I think Hollard Be Their Name, 
Hollard beat I name. Of course, it is a masterpiece. It is still the greatest song to this day, I think. But yeah, much love to Maiden. Uh, speaking of love, we get Phantom of the Opera, another classic. I, I just think that this this track listing is so flawless, man. I just love every song. Uh, the bass opening by Steve Harris is just great to listen to. Uh, just when he gets into that main riff. Yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite bass openings of all time. Uh, then, then we get the clapping from Bruce, Di uh, Bruce Dickinson uh, that gets the crowd hyped up. I really love when uh, Iron Maiden does, does those kind of things. Just, uh, just fuck around with their instrument and just getting the crowd hyped up. Well, actually not fuck with the instruments because they were really technical even at the beginning. Yeah, just a great track, uh, definitely a highlight of the self titled record. There's so many highlights on, that, on those records. Haven't reviewed it yet, but you know, uh, yeah, please ask it because you know I love this record. I love uh, Maiden's '80s output and even some uh, some later output though. I, I, I'm not a nostalgia a '80s uh, fanboy. Well, I once was, but still, I, I I can accept some later Iron Maiden records. It is just a bit more difficult to to get into those because they're different. But, st but still, but then we get uh, more classic songs from uh, self-titled, we get Iron Maiden and Sanctuary and Iron Maiden is a bit over the top I have to say. But I still really love the raw energy that Iron Maiden really delivers on this track and a, a, bit, a bit of the same with Sanctuary. Sanctuary is still a bit similar in, in that vein to, uh, to Iron Maiden. It is a bit silly but you know it, it is a fun song to listen to. Uh, yeah, and it just just a great follow up to to more Iron Maiden tracks, to more self titled tracks. I think that is really great to play more of those early early uh, records, Paul Diano era. I think that is great, but it didn't have a lot of choice. <laughs> they only had those two albums and the number of the beast, which you cannot show too much of because well then people have listened to it in its entirety. Uh, and then we end, and then we end with, of course, the two classic Maiden tracks, which are "Running Free" and "Prowler." I, I really love the the energy in "Running Free." I really love that uh, Bruce Dickinson is just saying, "I'm running free," yeah, and just running on stage, just just everywhere, man. I really love that about "Running Free" in general. Not, uh, I I think that Beast Over Hammersmith is a great live performance, but. Just running free in its entirety, the legacy. Just everyone loves this song, man. Everyone just praises it to death. And I think it is a great song, man. I really love the, you know, the bass, the by Adrian Spin and Dave Murray. I, I think that solo is great. The 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 Gilliop like um, riffs on the, on there. I really love that. I really love the raw, crisp voice on the original studio album, but I love it as well on um, on Beast of Hammersmith. And then we got Prowler, of course, which is a really bass-heavy uh, track to finish it off. A bit of a um, bit of a weird choice to to finish up or to close out the uh, the record, but still, really love Prowler. It is a classic song, five min five minutes in length. Um, yeah, and I actually think that you know. It is a great closer for a great live uh, live performance. So overall, uh, I I thought it was great, man. Um, yeah, first Rock Do requested it, and I thought this is gonna be long and this is gonna be dreadful. Uh, well, back back then, a few weeks ago, I still liked Iron Maiden. But, well, but now I I have to say that um, yeah, of course I I already love them, but. Uh, Beast over Hammersmith is just such a such a flawless live disc, man. It is now on um, on CD, I believe. Uh, Fifteen years now, yeah, it is. Yeah, actually, since November. So there we are. Um, so maybe I'm gonna get this on because it is so amazing. The first three records are on there. Uh, Maiden was alive and young. Well, they still are. They still are, but they're really old now. Um, yeah, and I just think that this is just great, man. This is great material. Everything on here is crisp, crisp, 
And you can guess, you can you can guess my rating already. It is a ten, man. Uh, I didn't know that it will it would be that good, but it was. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this on review, on review, uh, live on review. Just yeah, just let me know what you think about uh, Beast Over Hammersmith. I thought it was a flawless masterpiece, man. Um, yeah, people say that Life After Death, Death is better. I still have to listen to that, but. Uh, it is requested by the way, so don't ask. But yeah, to to overcome this, to be better than this, I'm not sure man, but our American can always try. I hope you've enjoyed this video, let me know what you think about um, this live album. I thought it was amazing, I love it. Um, and if you want me to do more Iron Maiden, more of the 80s stuff, more of the 2000s output, let me know in the comments and it will be done. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, just let me know what you think about Iron Maiden. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you think they're underrated? Overrated? Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys another day. Take care.